everyone, Gareth Fresh, founder of the World Health Innovation Summit. Absolutely delighted to join you this afternoon to have a discussion with my good colleague, Wendy, who's in Davos at the World Economic Forum. Uh, Wendy, hello. You're in Davos? Hey, I am. I'm in Davos and we're cash today because actually the World Economic Forum starts tomorrow. So today is set up, B-roll, get all the good stuff, connect with people. That's what we're doing. What do you actually expect? For the next week you know you're in davos and what's the expectation there like you know i mean we're at the moment we're talking about green transition opportunities I had a, an amazing inspirational speech from the secretary of state john kerry former secretary this morning so what's your expectations there well um I think WEF is in a new day. You can, if you have a WEF or if you have a World Economic Forum membership, you can stream it live anywhere in the world. So even if you're not live here in Davos this week, you can tap into all the great conversations. And I think what we're going to see is, as everybody's coming in today, you hear my phone, uh, my watch going off. People are checking in, and we're going to see a lot of. Um, globally minded world leaders across all the spectrums, you know, private business entrepreneurs, that kind of thing, and, and advocates um, connecting to talk about what's next in the world, what the, you know, we all know it's about the SDGs and, and aiming towards those 2030 global goals, but um, people tend to have a few areas that they're really interested in. So what we're going to do with our SDG Impact World campaign is we're going to talk to people about what their three SDGs are and learn more about what people are interested in and actually what they're working on. So want to want to attend a lot of things, connect with people, and then evangelize our new program that you are actually one of our leader advocates on. Tell me um, what's happening. Delighted. Yeah, tell me what's yeah, happening in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, so I mean, for me, this week is is a particularly important because we can make the link between climate change um, and health. And um, mm -hmm. so I think we're all, you know, fully aware climate change is the single biggest health threat facing humanity. Um, yeah. And it was very interesting this morning. I got an opportunity to ask the question to the panel, you know, around what are the links being made because. And I think there's a, there's a return on investment to be made if we factor in health issues, you know, from air pollution, yeah. for example. You know, so there's environmental factors that cost millions of lives every year. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to meeting people over the next few days. Um, and then looking at how do we mobilize the finance? Yes. Yeah. Last bit. Um, so for me... I'm really looking forward to this week. Yeah, and you've actually been doing a lot around that, Gareth. I think it'd be great if you share a little bit about the World Health World Health Innovation Summit. And you, um, you, unlike anyone else I've seen, have really connected um, health and climate together, and um, with some initiatives and some funding. I think it's worth talking about that a little bit this morning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, environmental factors, for example. 13 million lives per year. I mean, that's incredible. And then if we look at air pollution, this is the point I was making this morning. You know, it costs health and economic costs are about like $2.3 trillion. So mm -hmm. if we can mitigate those circumstances as we go forward, um, and particularly if we can bring the finance to the health sector for all sectors, yep. climate change agenda, I think we can make progress. 
I mean, from my perspective, I started the World Health Innovation Summit to help people, to help our health systems. But we've been able to create this kind of model that um, strengthens the health system, uh, improves people's health and well-being, creates a lot of jobs. I think that's one of the advantages. Uh, yeah. The bridge uh, with, with people in the energy sector, for example, today I had a number of discussions around energy and health. Not many people make that connection. Right. Yeah. It, it's one of the beauties of the 17 SDGs that really no one just is focused their effort on one of them that really they're interwoven, aren't they? You know, they're none of them stand alone. Yeah, they, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of the SDGs, because if you look at like partnership for the goals, in order to achieve SDG 3 or 7 or, you know, energy, you need partners. And, and I think collaboration is key to the success of the SDGs. And if we are going to hit those targets, I think the other thing that we need to think about is what comes after 2030. I think that's what I, what I want to focus on this week as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're with the right kind of people there that that whole region and, and do, you know, coming out of Expo in Dubai, which really has been the significant, the most significant World Expo so far and all the different innovations they displayed and actually put in place with sustainability and that kind of thing. Um, what a great place. What a great way that they're continuing their legacy. Yes, um, I mean, what I'm really, what I see when I come here, this is my third time in the last six months. And what I see is just that ambition and um, that appetite and that real driving force to make positive change. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why, why, I, why I've been attracted here. I've been doing, we've been doing a lot of work with global organizations. I'm, I'm, you know, an advisor to the Global Fund for Sustainable Development, for example. And then, um, you know, for real in the region to make a global impact. And I think you need that mindset, particularly if we're going to uh, deliver on the SDGs, you know, and, and we need that collaborative, shall we say, um, mindset to make things happen. Yeah, yeah. And I think that mindset's growing, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I think, I mean, even myself and yourself, we, you know, we're working with many, many great people around the world. And then mm -hmm. um, you can, everyone wants to get involved. Everyone wants to, take the opportunity. I think everyone also realizes that we need to make change. Um, yeah. And I think the only way to make that change is by working collectively. Um, I, I was so inspired this morning by, um, you know, John Kerry's speech this morning. And yeah. he really an inspirational speech. And he, he talked about, you know, the, the number involved. Um, you know, we need trillions of dollars, about $4.2 trillion every yeah. year. For the next 30 years. I mean, that is an wow. enormous opportunity. Oh. Think about that. That's huge. That's a big number. Big number. So that's a lot of jobs that could be created. I mm -hmm. think we have to be realistic. It's going to be a big challenge. And, um, you know, we, we need everyone at the table. Yeah. But that's, that's what Davos does as well. Like, you, you've got a week now of being able to get around global leaders, major corporations. They need to play their part. Like, yep. what, what's your impression on the ground? You know, the, is, is there a good feeling at Davos? Yeah, you know, um, it's just like it's that first day where everything's bubbling up. And, and then they'll, if you know, kind of the landscape of Davos, they, they lock down the Congress area because they have to keep all these world leaders safe. But on the two sides of the main promenade of Davos, there are... It's every, if you've ever been to South by Southwest, which I think a lot of people have, where the town transforms and big corporations and um, big organizations and actually countries are here and they take over all the, the existing business spaces like of a small town and display and have conversations. And so we did drive up and down today because you can actually still do that. And of course, the um, lots of big tech players, you know, the Googles, the YouTubes, the Meta, those folks, folks, Salesforce, and then you have the um, all the financial types of firms and consulting firms are here as well, and then. 
there's a whole segment of town. Um, I was really curious to see Ukraine had a really big presence last year and actually Zelensky was um, brought in on video and they still they have a little bit smaller presence this year, but they're still here. But there's, you know, there's India, there's um, all kinds of different countries that are here talking about what they're doing and actually coming there, doing business, emerging. And then what I noticed in the invitations, because it's partly um, done in all these different um, venues, is um, it seemed like a broader spectrum of um, types of conversations being had. I feel like Davos used to really focus um, almost solely or primarily on climate change, um, much like COP does. But um, it seems like there's just broader conversations and the blockchain and tech conversation and crypto are really alive here this year. And that's a, it's a little more than last year, I think. So we know that we know that how the digital landscape and how that whole that is changing is Another part, um, when you're talking about the climate and healthcare, digital and healthcare, similar um, similar landscape that now has to be built in a new way, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely, and it can be a great enabler. I mean, I I, I met colleagues today from Vanuta. Have you ever heard of Vanuta? It's it's off the coast of Australia. I actually have heard of it, but but Amazing. but yeah. yeah. Well, it's not well known. No, it's not well known, and um, I didn't actually know it until um, until we actually had the conversation, and we got yeah. it, it was it was just fascinating to see. Like, I mean, they're on the coal face of climate change, you know. Yes. So, yeah. so they were explaining to me the, the situation, and and we got onto you know the health system, and they actually have just a doctor who flies around to service forty thousand people, you know. So, oh, so wow. We're actually, yeah, so we were actually gonna we're gonna try and meet in London in the next few weeks to have a discussion around how we can support and help mm -hmm. them with a preventive model of healthcare, and um, and also can we bring investment because they could be a pilot, you know, they could actually be an exemplar model. So mm -hmm. so I think this, that's the beauty of these sort of forums, bumping into people like that, where you're able to have those conversations which you never have, and um, you know, right. you know, I, I wouldn't have expected to meet this in the, you know. The, the representative in, uh, at this forum. So, yeah. I mean, from your perspective, you know, please tell me about some of the initiatives, Wendy. You, you know, you're launching because you're you're really active in this space. I mean, you're doing a lot of work. You know, can you share with the audience here? You know, what what are you up to? I know you're heavily involved yeah. in X twenty twenty seven. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an exciting one. We're going to talk about that another day because today we're really going to talk about SDG Impact World, which yes. is a project you've actually been actively involved with, and and I'm excited to have your collaboration on. And um, we actually have three partners: the World Spare Fund, and mm -hmm. Flick Play, and Known, which is a Web three agency. <laughs> and the the three women business leaders have gotten together and. Um, their teams as well, and are collaborating around an, a digital collectible solution to help um, cons the consumer audience understand the SDGs. And so we're actually launching with free, for people who know the SDGs, everybody knows what that SDG pin looks like. In fact, why don't I have mine on? Um, and, uh, now you can own it digitally for free, complimentary from our partners, and you can actually have that live in Flick Play. And if you can imagine that what Flick Play is like, it's a Web3 social app, and it's if Pokemon Go and TikTok had a baby. Uh, so you can actually get your digital collectible, join our private community that's safe, it's on blockchain, it's private, so you're not uh, worried about what's happening out on social channels, which are kind of in flux right now. Um, but you can be there with a lot of other like-minded folks, and you can highlight your SDG work or your SDG community or anything you're working on specifically in the SDG world 
We've got a, a leader advocate community of about 50 people that will actually launch tomorrow. So you get to see some of the most inspiring um, SDG leaders in the world and what they're working on and have conversations with them. And they'll help us curate the community and bring in their projects so, so we can kind of extend these really important global events where people are getting together like at uh, you know, like in Abu Dhabi today, like in Davos today, like at Learning Planet next week, which where we will be in Paris next week um, on International Education Day, um, launching a Learning Planet Festival. So there's like the events we're both at today and this particular project, SDG Impact World, um, People are convening. There is good work being done. And to your point that you mentioned earlier, if we can get together and meet those people, the exponential benefits of that are, are just um, are amazing. And in fact, you and I met at WEF last year and look where we've come. So I think that just speaks to um, what these events can do if you can take the folks that can go and include the folks that um, aren't able to be there because not everybody can be at every event. Much like expos, when Dubai had their expo, um, not everybody can get to Dubai, but they did an amazing job of curating the content and making a digital twin of their expo so that all the 8 billion people on the planet can actually participate and be part of it. Fabulous. Listen, just I wanted to ask a question. Where yeah. do people go to find out more information? SDGImpactWorld.org, and we'll have the QR codes. They go live at in about five hours, and you scan the QR code, and it'll onboard you right into um, the app, and um, you'll join the conversation, and we hope to see some really fun videos from folks, and, uh, and we'll be active at WEF this week. Gareth, you'll be sharing some stuff on it from Abu Dhabi, right? I will indeed. I will indeed. Well, that, yep. that's where I was going to wrap up our conversation because we, we yep. can reconnect at the end of the week and see how far yep. we've come. And yeah, then I like it. Share with the audience, you know, the opportunities and where they can find out further information. So For sure. Yep. Wendy, we'll say uh, goodbye. I'm in Abu Dhabi. Wendy's in Davos. So yep. look, everyone who's tuning into this, we wish you every success and uh, yep. join us as we implement the 17 SDGs. So and show us what you're doing, right? Yes, please do. Yeah, share, what share what you're doing. doing. How are you making an impact? Post, get online, use the hashtags. You know, we've got plenty yep. of them there. So um, we look forward to connecting with you at the end of the week, Wendy. So we'll I'll see you right. from Abu Dhabi. Have fun so, there. We'll have fun here. See you soon.